This morning, desperation is growing in the Bahamas. Hurricane Dorian destroyed so much of the Abaco Islands and Grand Bahama. Over the weekend, evacuees and a ferry headed from Freeport on Grand Bahama to Florida were told to get off if they did not have a visa. So please, all passengers that don't have U.S. visa, please proceed to disembark. Then you come into the U.S.A. You all will have problems. This video posted on social media by a reporter for CNN affiliate WSVN in Miami. One woman told the reporter as many as 130 people left the ferry, including families with children. Now, on its website, U.S. Customs and Border Protection says visas are not required for Bahamian residents flying to the United States if they also meet other criteria like a passport and no criminal record. Florida lawmakers have been pressing President Trump to waive visa requirements for the evacuees. Seen as Patrick Hoffman has been all around Grand Bahama, he traveled by boat to the easternmost point, an area just destroyed and cut off by the storm. And Patrick joins us this morning. Patrick, what did you see? Good morning uh, again, John. And you know, here in Freeport, uh, yes, there's still no power or water, but things are slowly getting better. We are seeing food distributed, water distributed. If you're very patient, you can get gas. But the real sad irony is when you go to some of the hardest hit areas by Dorian, it feels if, as if the storm just happened. To get to the places still cut off by Hurricane Dorian, we have to go by boat. We've been traveling now for about two hours by boat. It's the only way to get here. This is our destination, the easternmost end of Grand Bahama Island. We know that it got hit really hard, but not much else. The road is still closed here, and we have not heard how the people here are doing. We really don't know what we're gonna find here. We head from Freeport to McLean's town, the last settlement on the eastern tip of Grand Bahama. Dorian filled in the channel and scattered cars throughout the small harbor. We have to navigate around the submerged vehicles. Yeah, we're going over a car right now. It's a car underwater there. McLean's looks like a war zone, and there are fatalities. Everything is gone. People like Eva Thomas's relatives, who remained and lost their lives. You know, you think about the people who stayed behind, what must they have gone through? Yeah, and I think about it, because I had a nephew, and three of his kids died in the storm. And I, my heart is broken. I say, I can imagine the terror that they were faced with before they passed. McLean's has been wiped off the map. It's difficult to conceive the force that could cause this kind of damage. It's just otherworldly to think the winds and the water could bury so much of this town under broken trees, broken houses, and we really don't know what is underneath all of this rubble. It'll probably take weeks or longer to dig out and find out what is buried here. All around us is an eerie quiet. It is the sound of a town that has died. Alex Carey is haunted by the sight of his cousin's dead body. She was then swollen. Like, you know, when a, when a dog get hit and you know, swell up the ready to bust, ready to bust, that's how she was, swollen. The Bahamian government says the death toll is officially 45. But add up the missing and dead from small towns like McLean's, and the true loss of life seems higher, much higher. What little help arrives here comes by boat from other Bahamians. These people brought water from Abaco, also ravaged by the storm. The rubble tells the story of lives cruelly interrupted. A shoe, a broken teapot, an award from a church. Mervyn Thomas tries to recover what's left of his town, a town he no longer recognizes. Man, I, I tell you the truth, I, I kind of feel lost. Lost is the place, everything, you know, just look, you know, totally different. You can't describe it. You never expect nothing like this, man, honestly. 
For so many here, all they have left are the things they carry. And Patrick Ottman joins us again. And Patrick, you're right. We don't and know what's underneath the rubble. We just don't know what's there. We don't know what's happened to dozens, maybe hundreds of people. Not yet. That will become apparent. What we do know is that people are trying to get off those islands and get to the United States. And in some cases, they're being restricted in their travels. They're being told to fly. How is that supposed to work? Well, it doesn't because there haven't been flights from Freeport uh, to the United States. The only way it could work is if you could get on one of the very few uh, flights. You know, we showed you the airport. You know how it looks to Nassau. And then from Nassau, uh, go to the U.S. And a couple of days ago, they were letting people uh, take boats and, and ferries is what we've been told. And then all of a sudden they've stopped. So it is a catch-22 uh, that people are caught in right now, John, and people who've already suffered so much. That's the last thing they need right now is to suffer more. Patrick Ottman, as always, thank you so much for your reporting from Grand Bahama. Just remarkable images, as mm -hmm. always, from Patrick.